hit and record. And there we go. And I already see that the chat number, well, not the chat numbers, but the participant numbers um, mm -hmm. are starting to go up. We have Roberto in here, um, Anzi, I think it's Anzi. Dalibor. So this is good. This tells me that everything went off without a hitch. That's where my anxiety comes in, Mike. I'm like, what if I cross the streams and put this invite on this side? But every time we see the attendee number count up, we know that that does not happen. Mm -hmm. All right. So Mike and Barut, how's everybody doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Kalia, how about yourself? I'm doing pretty good. We've good. had a busy week of it, Mike. Yes, we have. Yeah. I had to check the date today. I was like, what day is this? What are we Oh, doing? I did that. I did that yesterday. I couldn't yeah. I couldn't remember if it was Wednesday or Tuesday. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, for me, for me it's the same. I'm on a vacation, so the whole weekend it's you know Tuesday, oh, that's Wednesday, amazing. Thursday. Okay, Thursday. <laughs> we are here now. Mm -hmm. So it's great. Yes. Here we go. So you're doing great if you're on vacation, huh, Baru? No. Yeah, I'm doing great. Uh, you know, some worries, but uh Nevertheless, I'm skiing, so this is fun for me. That's, good. That's awesome. I haven't been skiing this whole year, and I live in Colorado, so this is kind of un it's unacceptable. And we've got a ton of snow. <laughs> There's a lot of snow up there. Maybe we should uh, go. Maybe I should come to your place. So. You should <laughs> come do like yeah, a site yeah. visit and check out our mountains over here. Yeah. Not too bad. The Rockies, you know, you got to give it to them. They're definitely uh, different than ours, so. Yeah. <laughs> You never well, know. Maybe. On the East Maybe. Coast. So the mountains over there are a lot um, icier. And, and in Colorado, mm -hmm. I had to learn my way around all the powder we have around here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so let's get everything kicked off. I see our participants are coming on in. Um, so I will officially welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Kalia Garrido, um, and I head up marketing and events here at Great Data Minds. GDM is a collective of passionate data activists, and we are on a mission to collectively modernize the world of data. And so we offer a full range of services for strategic planning, education, the deployment of critical data projects. And then we also produce a whole bunch of great data related content, uh, like you know, written pieces, events like we're having here today. Um, so please check us out at greatdataminds.com if you'd like to see what we're up to next. So a little bit of housekeeping as we get things going. This is a webinar and everybody is all zoomed out. So they know that a webinar means that your mics and your cameras are off, but we still wanna hear from you. So we encourage everybody to make use of the chat. You can also send a Q and A, um, a question into the Q and A if you'd like to. Um, and we'll leave a little bit of time at the at the end of the call if we want to have a more formal Q&A session. So some introductions as we get kicked off. Today we are flying across the Atlantic to go and see how the world of data analytics is doing in Slovenia. We are talking leadership perspectives. So this is the next in our leadership perspective series. And we are talking to Barut Olnik today. Uh, Barut is the director of BI at a large scale insurance company. He is driven to help stakeholders make better decisions using inform information that is derived from data. And for Barut, this goes beyond just business decisions. He believes that data can and should be used to inform personal decisions as well. And I can't wait for you to expand on that, Barut, because I want to see how you do that in your, your daily life. Um, so Barut carries a natural optimism. He is genuinely excited about technological innovation, and we are so happy to have him here with us today. Thank you for joining us, Barut. You're welcome. Thank you. And then the host with the most is our very own Mr. Mike Lampa. He is our chief analytics officer here at Great Data Minds. He's got a whole career's worth of experience as an executive analytics practitioner, uh, both as a consultant and as an employee in global 100 enterprises. Um, so with that, Mike, I will turn the floor to you. Thank you, Kayla. How are you, sir? As I said, wonderful today. Wonderful, uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a little well, bit, a little bit, a little bit tired, but uh, that's that's the fun part of the day. Well, that's what you get for going skiing. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's <laughs> it. of course. So, so Peru, thank you, uh, thank you for joining us. I was I'm really excited about this discussion we're about to have. So, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah. 
Oh yeah, uh, uh, as Kai already said, um, I'm very you know into the new technologies, new stuff. Um, and that's why I also uh, decided to uh, to study uh, on the informa informational technology. Mm -hmm. And um, my how my career started. I was start I started as on a provider side, so mm -hmm. um, developing uh, application, basically CRM. I was CRM mm -hmm. developer, and uh, that that was like um, for me the the start also to the data. As mm -hmm. you know, CRM is everything about the data, about the customers. Uh, what, how we can uh, improve business with the data with, uh, for the customers and so on. So the behavior, knowledge, and um, and all the valuable things that you can get from the customers, and um, that's why I in one point. I decided that you know developing things is uh, applications. It's not for me. Um, I always was like into the data, uh, what the data can give me and give us, and how can I help people with the data. So I transformed my career totally to the data, to analytics, and starting this uh, this um, this area that is for me, you know, like um, it's it's. It's everything what I like, you know, uh, data here, there, data there. And yeah. so um, I was like, um, you know, cubes, Power BI, visualizations and all the things that comes along the data. So how to present the data to the customers, how to uh, give them mo more out of the data, not just, you know, Excel spreadsheets. Uh, and that is okay, but, you know, um, you cannot get everything from that there. Um, and then, um, then I decided that, you know, from the provider side, it was enough. And I, I changed my career and moved to customer side. Uh, and currently I'm director of uh, BI uh, in Trigger Insurance Company. It's, it's great, great. Great opportunity for me, great job. I love it. Um, I know what I can do uh, for my stakeholders. Uh, how can I help them? Mm -hmm. And just love what I do. Um, I got to so. say, you know, the, the industry really opens the door for having a lot of passion. And um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm with you. I, I just, I love working with data. I'm just a data geek. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. Yeah, the last time I developed an application was I was writing COBOL and, <laughs> and, and, and reading and writing from VSAM files. Yeah, <laughs> yeah anyway. you, you, I understand you. For me, it's the same. I, I just love everything regarding the data and all the trends and say everything, what is coming and mm -hmm. uh, what was already there. And yeah, yeah that, that's, I think that we have ma many things in common. Yes, yes, sir, we do. So tell me a little bit about your company. Yes, so I'm, uh, I'm working in Trigger gr uh, Group. Uh, this is the, uh, the big uh, uh, insurance company. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the leading insurance uh, finance group in Slovenia and in Southeast Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, with um, our subsidiaries that they are in, um, uh, in a few countries that in ex-Yugoslavia, and with uh, some associated companies, uh, we are on seven markets and in six uh, countries. Mm. Um, and our company is like uh, more than 120 years old. And it is distinguished by knowledge, experience, uh, in, and excellence towards customers, employees, stakeholders, shareholders, and stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have ma two main um, strategic activities. One is insurance, of course, mm -hmm. uh, that includes life, non-life, uh, health and pension. And the other thing is asset management, uh, which includes insurance portfolio, mutual funds, enjoyable asset management, management and pension funds. So oh, wow. we are in whole trigger group, we are more than 5,000 employees. Wow, that's a good size group. Uh, yeah, so it's 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 a really large group, and I'm really satisfied to be here because I know what we can, uh, what I can give, and what my team can give to the mm -hmm. group with the data. So a hundred ten year old company. Um, it's hundred twenty. Yeah, hundred twenty. Yeah. Yeah. So my my sense is the company does have an appetite for being data driven. How do, how does a hundred twenty year old company evolve to that kind of um, culture. 
yeah you know um it's 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 the company is very innovative uh even though it's 120 years old uh, mm-hmm. and it's just searching for the opportunities and data is one of them and we all know that data driven company today data driven companies are really the the one that will succeed so we are not the like <laughs> Uh, we are not skipping this this uh, this train uh, to the to the mm-hmm. future. Uh, so yeah, uh, so we have uh, also you know through the years uh, there was a big development from the reports, the analytics, and so on. So mm-hmm. currently, um, I'm I'm like direct I'm the director of uh, BI department, and yeah. And and uh, how many people in your department? I believe. Uh, yeah, currently we are ten. Uh, mm-hmm. but uh, growing um, because we we know what we need to do, what we can do. Uh, so yeah, I have 10, 10 people in my team, uh, very competitive, competitive uh, with a lot of knowledge. Uh, so each of them has its, its own role, what to do, how to do it. And uh, yeah, I'm very proud to my t- for my team. It sounds like you'd be a great leader. So of those um, 5,000 employees um, in the company, how many of them are, do you consider your analytics stakeholders? Yeah, you know, uh, as I said, the main part, uh, so we are uh, more subsidiary. So we, Trio Insurance is the, the like the, the headquarter, or the mother. And so uh, what we are developing now, it's like basic intrigue insurance. And then what we have done is uh, took our experience, took our knowledge, uh, 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 know-how and transformed to the subsidiary. So they have basically a very, very uh, similar, similar analytic um, um, stuff in the bottom. Uh, and in, if, if we return to number of employees, so in trigger insurance is the the one the head uh, mm-hmm. there is two thousand a little more more than two thousand uh, employees mm-hmm. um, and we have currently like six hundred uh, users uh, on mm-hmm. our analytical reporting uh, tool so yeah it, you know it's not daily six thousand six hundred users but for for daily let's say 200 to 300 users mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and it just as i said everything is growing and also the the, the requirements demands it's mm-hmm. growing so yeah and so um how how much do you rely on partners to to help you and your team uh, deliver such excellence yeah. to uh, okay that's a pretty wide audience yeah mm-hmm. yeah you know with 10 people in the team you cannot build you know what you would like to build what we would like to do mm-hmm. and that's why i think that uh, partners are they are very important uh, and uh, for me it's like you know the trust between the partner and the mm-hmm. customer is the the most important so okay. if you can trust the partner you can build uh, a lot of stuff mm-hmm. big stuff um, that's why we are relying Part, I mean, mainly on partners. So mm-hmm. when you are developing new stuff, innovating and so on, uh, we have partners there and trying with them mm-hmm. to help us. Uh, but not just, you know, for me, when you have a partner, it's not enough to just have a partner and they build something. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, this, this part is, I don't like it uh, because I think that everything needs to be transferred to, to the team so that my team becomes competent uh, to build such such uh, such analytics that we would like to build uh, mm-hmm. and to transfer knowledge then to the other uh, mm. stakeholders so that right. is very important because um, um, what i want to do currently and what we are doing we are building the team and creating the center of excellence for the gro- whole group for mm-hmm. bi uh, and you know, without partners, yeah, as as I said, um, you cannot you cannot uh, do what you would like to do. Exactly. Yeah. At the velocity that the business needs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so how is your um, analyt- data and analytics organization structured? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In my team, um, we have like it's my team is flat so uh, we are all, all flat we, i don't have like departments but we know 
who is responsible for what and you know we have a group of people that are responsible for one part and the other part and the third part so we have a group of uh, people that is responsible for, the, for data so data warehousing and so on uh, then, we, then we have a group that they are like um, data analytics business analytics uh, mm -hmm. for bi and uh, creating the models and so on and then now we are also uh, developing and um, I'm just establishing the uh, the like the team for AI, uh, you know, AI machine learning and so on. This is everything is like trendy. Uh, we are going there. We know what we can do. The big data and so on. So we are also doing um, a lot of lot of activities on that point. Uh, so yeah. from my my perspective, it's like to have in the BI like for three departments, three, three organized teams. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that they, they, they are working together. You cannot separate them. You cannot say you will do just this and you will do just this because mm -hmm. it's like, it's- Yeah, that uh, doesn't create capacity if I have everybody yeah, yeah. in a little silo because what if one of yeah. them's out? You know, I need someone else to be able to step in. Yeah. That's right, that's right. And, and, and you know, when you have a data uh, engineer, he can help the the end uh, the end um, the end user at uh, in my team that uh, mm -hmm. helps uh, stakeholders. You know they are very 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 um, um, collegial. Uh, I mean um, they help each other. And yeah, I think that yeah. this is the, this is the this is the the most important thing that uh, it's in the team. Uh, so also not just partners, but <laughs> the most important is my team and how they can help each other. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it sounds like um, you have instilled your passion into your team. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Something how like do you know, you're moving into AI? How give us give us some insight on how you're exposing your team to AI principles and disciplines and knowledge? Yeah, um, so we have had some. Um, some uh, projects on AI. There are some of them were um, were uh, successful, some not. Of course, when you are starting, you are just trying to do something. Uh, and also, as I said before, we have partners, and partners are now helping us mm -hmm. uh, to get the competences uh, because you know you we need to have a good team uh, with good competences in um, in my team mm -hmm. and if you don't have everything you need to partner and uh, that's why we are we have a partner i said okay um, two of my uh, team members are like uh, doing everything with them um, mm -hmm. getting the knowledge uh, 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 getting the um, understanding the tool understanding the logic and so on and yep. what i want to do further on is also to employee more uh, more such uh, more people with such knowledge that they can help uh, with uh, ai and machine learning that's great uh, yeah so what what we have we have some um, uh, initiatives or what we can do we are already doing on that um, i think that uh, we know uh, we have uh, business cases Mm -hmm. uh, it's just you know it's it needs to develop and that every everybody will understand um, what are the benefits and that's why I, what I want to do is you know to to have one successful um, project mm -hmm. and just the, to get the buy-in uh, for mm -hmm. all others do they yeah. see okay you can do this okay we know we have uh, another business idea we can do this and that that and uh, yeah. that's so on you know this is like basic for me is just something normal uh, yes right so tell us um what what amazing things are you doing working with data right now um yeah yes um as i said um for me uh, the most exciting and what i would like to do is uh, as i mentioned is the center of excellence for the whole trigger group Mm -hmm. uh, I think that with knowledge that we have, we can just just like copy paste to our subsidiaries, mm -hmm. uh, so they they can uh, use uh, the data uh, as we are using it now. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, this is one very very important thing. Mm -hmm. The other thing is uh, we are just uh, um, implementing the Power BI as self service analytics. Okay. Um, just maybe one background uh, before we had reporting system. Mm 
you know, it was very uh, rigid. Uh, like mm -hmm. there is a report, it's like uh, Excel based. Uh, you cannot do anything without that, uh, with, um, with him. So you need to export data from, uh, from the report tool and use it in Excel again and create the pivot table and so on. So, so, on. Yeah. so um, I'm just uh, trying to now to, to turn around how the data is used. Uh, with Power BI, we all know it's very self, um, self you, you, can, you can have self service analytics on, on mm -hmm. top of it. Yeah. Uh, so for me, it's you know uh, to to implement self-service analytics, embedded analytics, and what I saw and I, what I'm seeing is that um, just giving the data and the reports and analytics to the end users is not enough. Um, that's why I would like, and I'm trying to I'm trying now to implement this is like uh, wide analytics so that my people, my team will know the business, will know what they pre presented on the, on, the, um, on the report and just help uh, stakeholders further on. Um, then another thing that is, uh, you know, I have many, many things. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will not just tell everyone, everything, but uh, just the things that I think that the, are made, maybe interesting for others. Um, one is, what is what I see is most important with regarding the, the what we are we were talking is data literacy, and um, data fluency. So mm -hmm. this is I think currently the main uh, main thing that um, I would like to uh, to do uh, because I saw that uh, without knowing how to read the data, how to use the data, um, people will just lose loss be lost because um, there is so much data currently out there and if you cannot know if you don't know how to pick the right one then you're 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 nowhere yes. and and like i mean i i think that data literacy i'm reading a lot of books about that uh, also uh, mm -hmm. is very important um, and I, i'm trying also i have some some uh, trainings uh, internally uh, to, to just to learn and to show all the other stakeholders what we can do with the data and how they can read the data, mm -hmm. uh, not just to get the data and say, okay, yeah, I got the data, that's it. Right. So, yeah. I got to um, turn it into something that's insightful yeah. and actionable. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and the last thing, maybe the most important currently is, um, so we have uh, currently data warehouse on premises, uh, mm -hmm. but we are just moving to the cloud. Mm -hmm. So this is one big project that we had in 2021 and still um, is uh, in the last phase of the, to going to, to the production. Uh, so in like six months, we transferred all the data that we have on premises to the cloud. So oh. we will be like um, cloud first. Uh, and um, I see many opportunities with the cloud uh, because of the ec ecosystem that the cloud, give, cloud gives you, uh, how you can use the data in other analytics, analytical tools uh, and also AI. ML and so on, and um, this is this is the last thing that is like the most important currently that uh, we are mainly my team whole team is working on that yeah. uh, with also partners and vendor and um, yeah I, I can say that we are on a on a you know a last phase uh, going to production and like in one month we'll be there uh, with all my main activities on analytics. Uh, right. Right, that's awesome. So that's a that's a pretty compressed time frame to move all of your on-prem data warehouse to a cloud or a cloud data warehouse in six months. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's yep. you got to be pretty proud of that. Did you just do a lift and shift, or did you make some changes in architecture as well? Yeah, we 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 made some changes in architecture also uh, mm -hmm. because you know when you have, when you are on premises and going to cloud is not just uh, lift and shift. It, you can do it, but uh, it will not work. Uh, so there are many changes, uh, mainly sleepless nights. Uh, 
a lot of worries, but uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I think that I think that with a with a with a with a goal, uh, and when you know what you want to do, uh, I think that everything can be done. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, again, there there are partners, vendors, and sometimes you have to push them very hard. Yeah. Yes, yes. But, <laughs> but yeah. uh, I know how it is on the other side. So <laughs> for me, it's, you know, maybe a little bit easier yeah. to understand. No, I do appreciate getting pushed around. <laughs> <laughs> Been doing it since 96. <laughs> um, so what's the business perception as a result of moving to cloud? Um, are, they, are they seeing value? Um, from my perspective, it's like moving to cloud is for end users nothing. For for them, is it, it's there's no uh, added value. That's why I said we have to give them something more. Uh, and my my idea is that, and what I want to achieve, and what we already done is uh, for them is so that they will get the data uh, ready earlier. Uh, so in the morning when they will come into the to the to the office, data will be already there, and this is the first part. So this is for me is like the how we can benefit from the cloud and from changing the architecture and everything else is first is uh, the data that is uh, prepared uh, faster, and the second one is the all the analytics that we can do. Uh, so out of that, uh, because. New technologies give us you so much opportunities. You yes, just have to grab them, grab it. So yeah. So so kind of uh, two two very significant prongs. One is starting to stand up the self service model so that the business mm -hmm. can do analytics at scale, right, mm -hmm. um, and not be constrained by your team of ten and your partners. Uh, and then the other is you're delivering that data quick more quickly and meeting SLAs which yes yes so that's right is the is the business changing from are they starting to get like dependent on the data like they were not before <laughs> yeah i mean you know um my main worry in the in, when i go to the sleep is when i will wake up uh when i will check the the emails if if I will get error or not. <laughs> so that, that means if there is error, I will get a call from the uh, stakeholders or mm -hmm. when the data will be ready. So no, currently, yes, uh, I can say that uh, um, people are may, very related to data. Uh, in the morning, you know, at eight o'clock, data sh has to be ready. Uh, mm -hmm. If it's not, then it's, you know, uh, a lot of uh, phone calls and so on. But, um, and, Nevertheless, you know, even if you do everything right, it's there is night, and if something goes wrong during the night, you cannot do much. And mm -hmm. we know that we are doing all, all the controls that everything will be okay. But uh, nevertheless, mm -hmm. uh, it happens that yeah. uh, the the data is not ready in the morning. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's that's my worry at the evening when I go. I mean, at the evening in the morning when I go to mm -hmm. bed. <laughs> Uh, and when I wake up, um, mm -hmm. yeah, well, and and that darn data coming from those sources sometimes throws us um, a surprise, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Break things. So um, let's talk a little bit about what does keep you up at night, besides what you've already mentioned. What other? Yeah. Things? Uh, okay, so I'm I'm not uh, more. I, no, I'm I'm morning guy and i'm uh evening guy so i i mainly i i don't sleep a lot uh <laughs> it's like five hours uh, so for me is um the issue is that um re regarding the data data and what i do is not just a job for me it's my hobby mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. In the night, I, I in the evening, uh, if I don't do anything for uh, for work, um, I just like to investigating new things, new technologies, new tools, what you can do, uh, reading books um, like uh, data strategy, uh, data literacy, and so on. Mm -hmm. So what we can do uh, to to achieve more, um, mm -hmm. it's 
I think you know you shouldn't talk to my wife <laughs> <laughs> uh, regarding this because she's like again bored. Why? <laughs> you know, it's my hobby. <laughs> it's like it's like you know going to to to, the, to run or the bike. Uh, mm -hmm. No, really. Um, I I just love everything uh, driving analytics and uh, if not uh, anything else. I'm just creating some reports and uh, optimizing some stuff. So, mm -hmm. but, but beside that, I'm also uh, currently doing MBA. Um, so oh. you know, this is one more thing in my whole uh, whole series. So, yeah, yeah. Continuous learning. That's awesome. And yeah. and, and these these days, and I think it's going to be this way. Um, my my guess and my hunch is the rate of change of new cool technologies is just gonna continue to explode, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so as, as leaders, as well as you know, delivery teams, we all have to constantly be open to looking at new technologies um, and, and, and figure out how to, is there an opportunity to be adopting them continuously without disrupting our progress, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be an interesting challenge. Hopefully, we'll get to a point someday where our data products are nice and encapsulated, where if I want to change out the underlying technology, all I have to do is move the data product to the new technology. That's where I would love to see us get to. Yeah. That would be great. Um, I totally agree. Uh, yeah. I just don't see, you know, uh, if we look like five, six years, uh, past five, six years, it's there was a lot, a lot of change. Mm -hmm. in all fields um, i mean you know when you have uh, I, I, we are also taste testing the low code no code um, ai mm -hmm. you know this is something is like citizen ai and it's you know wow um, mm -hmm. just it's maybe not there yet at the level that should be used um, for citizens mm -hmm. but um, yeah this is something new and um, also we are may, maybe uh, uh, people are hard to accept that uh, that they can do something by themselves like mm -hmm. AI and so on and I think uh, if we look trends for mm -hmm. the next three years there is like many changes will happen to, with also with uh, big data and so on and mm -hmm. um, the technologies that are un underlined yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, as you said and for me, it's, it's the most important thing. You have to be open and you have to be there uh, checking all the, the new technologies because if you, we cannot go to bed like and sleep uh, and say, okay, we are here, we have this, we have this 10 years. We're yeah, done. Okay. Yeah. If, it, it's, not, it's not that what we, why, why we are here, I think. So yeah, we have to be, constantly changing uh, our ways and in fact yeah uh, as we are changing we stay we still needs to be we still need to be constant so the the business uh, shouldn't suffer from these changes uh, right. that's the main point so right. even now we are moving to the cloud my first worry not not worry but uh, what i want to to do is you know we have some regulatory stuff that needs to be done. And mm -hmm. my perspective is better to wait one month and have everything ready for the end users than going to the cloud right now and say, okay, you will do it like this and they will have some troubles and so on. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so be... sorry, go ahead and finish. No, no, just. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, you kind of, you, you bring up a good thought in my, well, I don't know if it's a good thought, but you bring up a thought in my head. Um, as you're doing the self-service enablement and you're exploring, extending it into AI, um, are you getting any kind of concerns from risk management or your governance bodies? Yeah, of course. Uh, they are constantly che che checking because you know when you have the when the business is related to the to the data, to the analytics and reporting, then mm -hmm. you should have like um, the bottom bottom should be constant, and you you have to deliver what it needs to be delivered. And 
what we are doing now is just, as I said, extending. And you know, you have this report, but you know, you can sh you can check it differently in a different way, like in self service on this uh, on this kind, and just doing the buy in for for users. And they say, okay, yeah, we want more of this and less of that. Uh, but yeah, of course, at the end, users say, okay, we get the data, the data is right, uh, we can do all the reports that uh, needs to be done. And for me, that is, that is um, the, main, the main thing that needs to be uh, uh, done for end users. So also then for all the regulatory regulations um, that we have. Um, you know, I, I want to go back to the data literacy for a moment. Um, um, everybody's trying to figure out how to, you know, bring up the literacy and fluency of their organizations uh, with regard to working with data. Um, did you develop some of that training on your own as a result of reading your books, or are you taking advantage of partners that have been focusing on literacy training? Yeah, uh, no, uh, currently what we are doing, okay, yeah, yes, I, I, I saw that this, this I mean, I, I, we have seen this for many years now, but uh, currently at uh, um, last year, last two years is more and more popular, this data literacy. And uh, what we have, what I have done now is uh, we'll have like um, internal training for mm -hmm. analytical tool, but then beside that, uh, we will just uh, include also the data literacy. Uh, mm -hmm. and so that people will slowly uh, get uh, this this uh, this knowledge mm -hmm. uh, because I said if I just say okay now we will just say okay everybody needs to be data literate and if I say this to to my colleagues they will say okay yeah but you know we have so many things blah 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 um, so I said okay we have report and what we can do and how we can do, use it and so on this is the, the way that we are doing it now mm -hmm. um and i think that it it will be a uh, good good progress um i also think that when you relate on data literacy too much to the partners that cannot help on real business cases it's a little bit harder uh, for me, it's very important to have a real business case to show them. So if you talk to HR, uh, for example, you have to know their um, their business, what they are doing, and with them just trying to, to learn uh, so how to read the data, uh, how to uh, make more actions with the data, and so on. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just you know, combining with the tool. Got you. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, all right, so we covered um, what is keeping you up at night, and it's kind of a combination of is everything okay, but it's more so you just don't sleep anyway, um, because you live in, in, the, in your data world of passion. Um, but how do you keep a balance? How do you maintain your balance and, and maintain your sat sanity through all of this? Yeah, uh, I mean, the first thing is family. Uh, I think um, good relationship with the wife, um, great, great uh, kids uh, that I have, two sons. Uh, this is for me is, you know, beside what is my passion, this is everything for me. Yeah. Um, even more. Um, I mean, family is the first thing. Um, and um, spending time with them, like now that we are skiing is for mm -hmm. me, it's perfect. It's time for um, let's say that I don't think about the the, the work. Let's say I don't think. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I I can I cannot move away from that. Uh, so this is the first thing. Then um, I just love uh, cycling, road cycling. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's for this is for me. It's just for me. Focus for me. Uh, mm -hmm. Three hours, four hours uh, to. Yeah. To clear my head um, and uh, reading books, different yep. books, not just about data, but uh, also other books. It's it's time to relax. Um, That's awesome. So, yeah. Well, what a great story, great journey that you're on. I'm so happy to hear the, the success story that you have going. We'll have to check in in, in a few months. I want to see how that AI journey is going. Yeah. 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 yeah we, you should. You should. <laughs> yes. Well, 
thank you so much for spending your time and sharing your perspectives as a leader in, in what the largest um, insurance company in the Adriatic uh, uh, area of Europe. So uh, wonderful story. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Baruch. Thank you, Mike, for inviting me. You're and very also welcome. Kalia. Yeah, this is a great, great conversation, guys. So I want to open it up. If anybody has any questions, this is a great time to pop them into um, the chat or to the Q&A. And I have just uh, taken the liberty of putting in a link to an event that we have coming up. Just a quick little promotion is that mm -hmm. we are going to do our third annual Tech Manners Marathon it is coming up on um, March 10th for us. So if anybody wants to join and take a look, um, an inside view into six of the coolest data and analytics technologies that are out there right now, ThoughtSpot, Alation, Data Robot, Starburst, Single Store. Store. Yep. <laughs> I think that's all of them. I, <laughs> uh, so if anybody wants to join, please do so here. And I don't see any questions coming in, yep. but this was a fascinating conversation, Brew. Thank you so much for giving us an inside view onto how things are going in your, your part of the world. And, uh, like Mike said, we look forward to staying in touch with you and seeing what's coming for you next. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for today. Yeah. All right, sir. Everybody. Thank you. Have a great day. Right. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.